So you're retired or you're in the planning stages of retirement and you're planning to plan spending six months of your time somewhere warm. Congratulations, how exciting. Now, what should you bring? What should you leave? In this video, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to assess what to bring, what should stay and what should go. As a bonus at the end, I'm gonna give you a little, some tips on what to do if you're bringing your pet and some things that you'll need to be aware of and bring along for that. So come on, let's get started. Hi, I'm Shelly and welcome to my channel, What Are We Doing Today? I'm a snowbird and I spent six months in Puerto Morelos, Mexico and six months in Canada. My mission is to guide people recently retired or soon to be retired to try and avoid some of the mistakes we made when we were newbies. Knowledge is power and sometimes you just need some help navigating the uncharted waters by being pointed in the right direction. By the end of this video, uh, you will have an outline on how to figure out what you should bring south with you and what to leave behind. The first thing you need to do is to look at your lifestyle and goals. What do you want to do when you retire? Where are you going to be? How are you traveling? What are your needs? Okay, so to show you what I mean here, I'm going to use us as an example and show you the process that we went through. Our lifestyle is pretty low key. We're a little bit adventurous, but we have some physical limitations. That's going to impact our planning for our activities. We're homebodies, so uh, home entertainment is extremely important to us. We fly to our winter destination in Mexico, so we're limited on the, the amount of things that we can take with us. If you're driving, you'll have more space and you can be more generous with your packing list. We winter in Puerto Morelos, Mexico, so our town is approximately 26,000 people and we have access to three pretty good grocery stores in a town that size in Mexico. There are also lots of small local shops where we can do some shopping as well. We're also located between Cancun and Playa del Carmen, so we have access to things like the Costco's, Sam's Clubs, Walmarts, and all of those big box stores, Home Depot, that are available in our own country as well. So without too much trouble, 30 minutes or so, we can be at either one of those big cities for to buy things that we probably don't have space to bring with us. Our activities are going to be centered around the things that are going on in this area. So we are near the beach, we have access to lots of cenotes and lots of places for day trip. Okay, so that's our assessment on our lifestyle and what we like to do. So let's get more specific on things to bring. Okay, let's talk wardrobe. This is what I brought and this is what I didn't use. I brought three good outfits two pairs of dress shoes. I only needed one. But that's because we live a very casual lifestyle. We don't go out to fancy restaurants. I wore my, my nice dress twice in the whole six months we were there. We went out for Christmas dinner and then we went out with some friends to another nice restaurant for dinner. So the three other, the three good outfits I brought and the two pairs of dress shoes were really, really a waste of space in the luggage. And now I know that. For everyday clothes, I brought too many t-shirts. The climate is really, really hot. So I wore tank tops more and I ended up buying more tank tops in Mortar, Porter Morales. I also brought two or three pairs of capri pants and an extra pair of long pants along with the jeans that I wore. I never wore any of that stuff. On the other side, I only brought one bathing suit. Uh, renting an Airbnb that had a private pool and being a 10 minute drive to the beach, I should have brought at least two, maybe three bathing suits. I brought five pairs of shorts and that was perfect. With the hot weather, you really don't re-wear things as much as you would when it's not so hot because you're sweaty. The other thing you have to remember is that when you're staying long-term, you probably have access to a washing machine. So you can really downsize what you are bringing because you can do laundry whenever you please. And therefore you can get away with bringing less. For shoes, like I say, I brought two pairs of dress pant, dress shoes and I brought one pair of everyday sandals and which I wore every day. 
I ended up buying a pair of water shoes and a pair of just walking shoes because one of the excursions I went on they recommended wearing closed-toed shoes so I didn't bring any of those so I uh, I ended up buying a pair again what you bring depends on what you're planning to do we're located near the second largest coral reef in the world so it was a no-brainer that we needed to bring snorkeling gear as far as daily living rick loves tv and i love youtube so we brought our chromecaster and my laptop most TVs have Netflix and YouTube all built in now, so we ended up never using the Chromecaster. If you're a reader, consider bringing um, some device that you're able to download your books to, like a Kindle or Kobo, that kind of thing, because then you can save room on not having to pack books and that can save you some space and some weight in your luggage. If you have a hobby that you love, Make space for the things that you need to do that hobby if you can. Remember, whatever you do at home is probably very similar to what you're going to do when you're down south for six months. Okay, now think about what you need, what you must have, like your medications, vitamins, any special dietary needs. Just be aware that sometimes things that you need in your everyday life are not always available in the country that you're going to for the six months. Oftentimes things are, you can get things, but if you have something specifically dietary, do some research before, see if you can get what you need in your country, like in Mexico, um, or make sure you bring enough with you when you come. I am a borderline diabetic and we were a little bit unsure about what I was going to be able to find for my, uh, for my testing equipment. So I took all of my testing equipment, I took enough lancets and enough test strips to do me for the six months. Now I don't test every day, maybe once a week or so, but I just made sure that those things came with me because they were important to my day to day life. I brought my like almond flour and xanthan gum the things that I need to make my own tortillas because I was unsure whether or not I was going to be able to get anything down there to be able to make those and it's important enough to me that I brought those things with me as it turned out I was able to find low carb tortillas in the local grocery store so I didn't end up needing to make my own tortillas which was was fantastic but I just didn't know so rather than take a chance that was important enough to me that I made sure that I brought that with me so anything that you must have has to go on your list. It has to go on your packing list if there's something that you are unsure that is really necessary to your day-to-day -day living. Another consideration you have to make when you're doing your packing list is your budget. Are you going to be able to just buy things that you need rather than bring them down? If you have the budget, it's really good to have a full set of things in both places, both down south and at your place at home. It just saves so much on the carrying things back and forth. Again, that can depend on whether you're driving or flying, because if you're driving, you got more space, you can be more generous with your list. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you can think of that you just can't live without. Also, if you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, so for consumables like hygiene products, you can buy that stuff wherever you're going. So don't waste waste space or weight with those things in your suitcase. Don't forget money. Be sure to get some currency from the country that you're traveling to so that you're prepared when you arrive with at least a little bit of cash from the country that you're visiting. We always order pesos from the bank before we go. So after going through this process of assessment on what we must have and what we really can live without, I have come up with our packing list as follows.
for those things that I couldn't bring and I needed to buy here in Mexico, be sure to watch my video showing where to buy things in Mexico. I will put the link to that video at the end of this one and I will also put it in the description below. So that is my list specific to my lifestyle. Your list will be different depending on your likes and needs and your activities that you plan on doing while you're down south. Do you have something you just can't live without? For me, it's my Keurig coffee maker. Rick and I have different sleep patterns, so a full pot coffee pot just doesn't work for us since we want coffee at different times. I bring a one cup Keurig with me. It's important enough to me that I will use, I will save the space to be able to bring that to, in my suitcase. And you might have something like that as well. Okay, now as promised, here is my bonus list of things to bring if you have are bringing your pet with you down south. I know we specifically have a dog, so if you have a cat, your list may be slightly different, but this is basically what I brought down for Penny. I hope you found this video helpful in planning your trip down south for the winter. Thanks for watching.